welcome to the workshop. Today we're starting the construction of a Japanese planing board. I've just cut off two lengths of studding timber, softwood studding timber, to use as the feet. Now I'm assuming if you're making this planing board that you quite possibly don't have a workbench of your own. So I'm going to be constructing this without the use of a workbench, showing you how you can do that yourself. The materials you'll need is a length of hardwood for a vice jaw, uh, a short length of smaller hardwood dimension for the saw stops, and an, another piece of hardwood to cut the planing stop from. You'll also need a long length of hardwood to use as a planing rail. And of course, last but not least, the planing board itself from hardwood. You will also need two short lengths of studding timber to use as the feet. All these parts can be bought dimension to size from your local timber merchant or sawmill. A SketchUp model is available from my website whymadeodd.co.uk This is the main board of the planing board. This is going to be the top side and this is going to be the planing rail side. Now I want to mark out for where my feet will be one either end. I want them to be approximately four inches in from each end. So I'll mark four inches from this end, four inches from that end, and then I'll mark just using the the feet the width of each foot from those four inch marks. Now I'm going to mark out for the dovetail that attaches the feet. I'm going to use this bevel gauge which I've set to the same angle as my dovetail bit. I'm going to cut this one by hand uh, just to show those of you who don't have a router that it's perfectly possible to make this without one. We want our dovetail to be in the centre of our feet so we'll just make sure we, we mark it out in the middle between the two markings we made on each end of the foot. Once we've marked the dovetails for each foot we transfer those markings on the underside of the board and repeat the marking on the front side of the board. Using a marking gauge I mark the depth of the dovetails at half an inch on all four points and once that's done we're ready to start sawing. We'll hog out most of the material using the saw staying just with inside our lines and then we'll clean up finally with some chisels. To finish off the sawing, rest your work on the floor on one of these cabinet lining material mats that's very sticky and stops it moving around. And then if you clamp two pieces of wood on either side of your saw, a half an inch from the tips of the teeth, that will stop you going too deep and then you can quickly hog out the central section to the right depth. Now to finish the clean up of the dovetail sides use your bevel gauge still set to the dovetail angle and some chisels line the chisel up with the angle on the bevel gauge and applying pressure just clean down 
the inside edge of your dovetail slot and just repeat all the way along so you have a lovely neat slot. To clean out the very bottom of the dovetail slot just use a narrow bevel edge chisel working from both sides. Of course you can cut these slots using a router and I'll show you that now. To route the dovetail slots I've set up a straight cutting bit in my router and two fences to make sure I route a straight line in the correct position. With the straight slot cut I now insert a dovetail bit, extend my guides out slightly and then I can cut on both sides of the slot to create the full dovetail slot. And there's the finished slot. And to be honest, it probably was very slightly quicker than doing it by hand, but not very, very much at all. To mark for the dovetails on the feet, clamp the feet above the dovetail slot that you've created. Make sure they're at 90 degrees to the face of the, the board. And then mark up the dovetail widths up to the gauge line which I've made on the foot a half an inch from the base of that foot. You can probably just see the line there. Now we use a bevel gauge just to mark out the full shape of the, the end of the dovetail on the foot. And it should obviously look the same as the slot that we have just below it. Now we just need to remove this material for the length of the foot and our dovetail will be complete. Using a marking gauge we just transfer the, the markings for the dovetail along to the other end of our foot. Cutting the dovetail without the use of a, a workbench and vise is a little tricky. I'm using the cabinet liner matting here which is pretty grippy but uh, while sawing with it it does move around a bit so just be careful and take your time. Just stay slightly outside the lines and then we can clean that up with chisels. I'm just using a router plane here to remove the waste at the side of the dovetails down to half an inch using the planing board as a stop if you don't have a router plane you can use chisels to remove this material in the normal way setting them up vertical putting them in the knife line and pushing down once you've removed the square section of waste down to a half an inch it's time to move on to the angle of the dovetail and I'm using a shoulder plane here just to gradually creep up onto that angle. It will leave a little bit in the corner that it can't quite get to, but we can clean that up later. We can clean up this extra left behind using a chisel referencing off the face of the dovetail. And so finally we have our feet fitted. It's a nice snug fit which is just what we want but we can also easily remove them when they need replacing. 